Film Junkies! Yes, Here we are, reviewing the Mauritanian. Mauritania. The Mauritanian, yeah. Mauritania, not a country that often gets gets no, mentioned where in the news. Is it? I think it's beneath Western Sahara, near yeah, Morocco. That, sounds that, right. that yeah, side, yeah, Algeria. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's directed by Kevin MacDonald, who directed obviously the Touching thing. the Void, yeah. Last King of Scotland. Kevin MacDonald. He also directed the Whitney Houston documentary, Whitney, more oh, recently. I didn't know the that. Bob Marley documentary, Marley, oh. Touching the Void, as I said, and The Last King of Scotland was his. I, it was Forrest Whitaker playing Idi Amin. Oh, it was fantastic. really, really good. A long time ago, though. Yeah, it was a really good film. Okay. It stars quite a start a cast Benedict Cumberbatch or Cucumber Patch um, uh, he also produced it Jodie Foster um, uh, Shailene, Sh Shailene Woodley who's very good she was in Big Little Lies and Tahar Rahim who was in A Prophet which yeah. was phenomenal it's based on a book called Guantanamo Diary mm -hmm. written by Mohamedo Oud Slahi so it's essentially about someone who is essentially accused of being involved in the organising of and training of those people who flew into the Tower, Twin Towers of 9-11. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he is taken to Guantanamo Bay, he's an inmate, uh, and Jodie Foster and Shailene Woodley mm -hmm. take it upon themselves to fight for his, his release. It starts with him seeing his family, he gets arrested, he gets taken in. It's a legal drama. Yeah. Isn't it? It is. About his innocence or not. Yeah. Uh, and about Jodie Foster. And about the American justice system. And the American justice system. And essentially this is looking at things through the perspective of this guy has been wrongly framed by the American state because as one of the, the troops or uh, the high-ranking official soldiers in the American army says, we've got to find somebody. Yeah. Somebody has to, we have to have somebody. Somebody has to pay. Somebody has to pay. And it's like, is this just the somebody? Yeah. Uh, now, all of this, I think, is really meaningful and important. I think it's still shocking and surprising that despite after Obama, yeah. there are still 40 inmates uh, at yeah, Guantanamo absolutely. Bay. Uh, with no, who have had nothing, no, um, never been charged, never with, been charged anything. with anything. And yet, what did you make of this film? Because I mean, I think in mm. terms of what happens, it's pretty obvious. It's a standard fare. We've seen this kind of thing before, mm. you know. So Jodie Foster seeks to defend him. Yeah. Benedict Cumberbatch is going to be the prosecutor for the army. And his difficulty, Benedict, is that all his family and friends and people from that yeah. he fought with and everything. He, one of one of his friends was actually in one of the planes. Yes. And everybody that he knows Believes is more he or less just saying, away. go on, Benedict, you've got to go and do you're your doing job. This for and America. You're doing it for us and America. Yeah. yeah. So you instantly feel sort of sympathy for Benedict. But you know, I suppose... The moral knows, dilemma. Moral dilemma, exactly. And a refreshing moral dilemma that, that in the end... I mean, this is a spoiler review mm. and we know what happens because it's in real life and it's written in a book called Guantanamo Diary. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch f essentially is uncomfortable with, yeah. with prosecuting. He gives up in well, a way. Does, because, yeah. I mean, I mean they, they ask for evidence, both sides do. Yeah. And the amount of material that comes that's redacted. redacted yeah. that's, so it's, it's unreadable, mm. it's undealable with. And even to get to the point where they even have a clue what has been going on is so long. And Benedict, what, what, what's quite nicely nice about the way it's done is that Benedict provides the sort of the person who, although he wants he wants to do the right thing by all his friends, he's intrinsically fair, mm. and he can see that the stuff that he's being given doesn't prove anything, yeah. even when they get to the stuff where they can see exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. what. Yeah. And um, and you get this moment as well with uh, Sh Charlene and um, I thought Shailene Woodley's character, as you say, was. It was a curious role for her. It didn't really go anywhere, did yeah, it? And no, it didn't no really way. amount to anything. No I felt they should have. They called... brought her back in at the end. Of why? Yeah, um, Jodie Foster. What did you make of Jodie Foster? I have problems with Jodie Foster. Yeah, you know she won a Golden did. Globe for this. She did. Yeah, I think she nominated for an Oscar. I just have problems with her. She's so brittle, and so sort of. Um... I mean, I suppose that's what a lawyer of her standing and status and mm. who has to defend people like that would be. But, um, and there are some sort of like filmic illusions, aren't there, when she first walks through the uh, <laughs> things and like, yeah. silence of the silence lambs the lamb, instead yeah. of, you know, yeah, things being thrown at her and stuff like that. But she's, I mean, she gets the job done mm. and she sort of, she's absolutely... Um, Workmanlike. Yes. I'm, yes. I'm never excited by her. No, normally. And I also don't ever think I'm going to be surprised by her. No, normally. And I wasn't in this. No, I wasn't. Uh, and it's nothing to do with it being a legal drama. I like legal dramas. Yeah, you do but, more than me. I'm yeah, not a fan of legal dramas. But I was thinking, I was thinking, I felt much more sympathy, sympathy for the, although I was on his side, the main protagonist. Yeah, Taha. Uh, 
um, to heart, yeah. I, I felt much more sympathy for the Benedict character because he gave us a fully rounded person. Right. Whereas she didn't give us any any. So what did you think of Taha Rahim playing Mohammed? <sighs> well, I don't know what to say about this because I so revere him as an actor. Hmm. I, I thought he okay. Let me let me put, yeah, let me throw out what I think. I thought at times he was brilliant. Yes. And I thought at other times he was just odd. Yes. <laughs> I agree with that. I, I, there were times where I don't think he quite knew what he was going for. No. Or maybe the director didn't. And there were other times where he was absolutely on it. He he, he can be utterly brilliant. And yeah. I think that does work with the director. I think it was directorial, that, rather than him. Yeah. I think I, it had to be. I have to say, I think if I, many of my problems with this film were, were more directorial than anything else. I thought him himself, I found him very compelling. I thought his oddness was his, you know, was his foreignness, maybe. Mm. I was trying to get to grips with him. This is a man who's been systematically tortured and abused by the American state. And this is something I really think is key about this film. Mm. He was tortured by the American state. Yes. And I thought the most powerful moment in this film was a relentless montage sequence, which reminds you of what they actually did to people. Yeah. In a really unflinching and quite horrific way, you know, sexual torture, essentially, mm. with people trying to seduce, you know, knowing, you know, tearing up the Quran, um, you know, pigs, waterboarding. waterboarding, taken out on boats and having your head put in the water and dragged around. Now, all of this stuff, sanctioned, all of this stuff is, has been uh, ratified, is in Guantanamo Diary, the book by the man that this mm -hmm. happened to, mm -hmm. has been ratified by the filmmakers. And when you actually start to look at, you hear waterboarding, and I think we all now think, oh, well, waterboarding, it's it's going to be an awful lot of water down yeah, there. Yeah, well, yeah. You've got no idea. No. This is, this is you think you're going to drag, this is torture. And I thought... I think what he was going for in his strange, strangish performance was the post-traumatic stress of having gone through a lot of that. Because yeah. you're jumping around in time. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you had all that extraordinary rendition and all that kind of stuff. You're now not in a state. Do you know what's going to happen? If you don't tell us what's happened, you've got to tell us what's happened. What's happened? Mm. You did it. You did it. Mm. <laughs> and they had the whole thing of the nice interrogation yeah. and the not nice interrogation. So it wasn't surprising, but I thought it was a timely reminder of something that we've possibly all chosen to forget about. Yeah, absolutely. But where I, I would actually disagree with something you've just said, because although it was important to show us a mon, I didn't like the montage of the torture. Oh, right. It was badly done. Oh, did you? I thought it was like cartoonish. Right. I thought they could have done it in a. Di and this again is the di direct mm. director's thing. It was like boom, boom, boom. Mm. And okay, I don't know how they should do it, but I'm not a director. I, it was too. It was too. You Stylized. Know, yeah, well, no, no, just two. Every torture you've ever heard of, he showed you it one after the other. Yeah. I don't think the actor had anywhere to go with that except sort of. Right. Um, See, I quite like. I think I quite. I found that quite effective. Did you? No, yeah. I, I didn't. And because um, it was, it was relentless. It, and within a quite an ordinary film, mm. it was quite shocking. And it kind of it gave you some context to these very impassive sort of talking in a sort of con shipping container chat and then you know sort of lawyers in an office and all that kind of stuff you think fucking hell this is what's actually happened to this guy yeah 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 um there are lots of sort of really nice details about guantanamo bay itself you know like all this i uh, like the moments where he was in the courtyard yeah and he had that, that sort of the chain school. mail yeah and yeah. you could only listen to people and talk to people and yeah. work out what was going on for people through. i mean it was so complicated plot wise and le legal legal wise in that, say, the guy that he'd made friends with, the Frenchman, yeah. seemed to be really important right yes. until the end. They had to find him, and then they yeah. found him, and then that seemed to resolve something. Did you know what that was about? No, not what really. that resolved? No, nor did I. But a little but bit like another movie we've reviewed recently, Concrete Cowboy, this also has uh, documentary content of the actual guy who this happened to. Oh, yeah. At the end, you know, talking yeah. through stuff and singing the song. And, I know. Which I thought was, uh, did add a certain piquancy to the whole thing. It sort of made it feel very, all right, okay, this is a real person we're talking about yeah i i thought my criticisms with it as a film would nearly all be directorial not right. not him not the main actor and that's not because i'm just you know can't see past that mm. he's not always good but they were t i mean i thought the montage wa wasn't particularly good for me for, for many reasons but i didn't like the the scenes of him as in blue walking across um mm. sand dunes I, I thought there could have been another way of doing it it was too it was yeah. corny it i mean i thought corny. the flashbacks were a bit corny absolutely flashbacks to when he was with his his wife or the girl that he fell in love with and, yeah and all that kind of stuff i, I know what you mean know what um, you mean. a bit predictable uh, yeah and um and in a way 
we have talked a bit about his performance and maybe we're both sort of struggling with this because I know that I know exactly what you mean by sometimes it was just odd because sometimes as I was watching him I was thinking oh he's being brilliant here because he's playing the you know like a Middle Eastern man who's proud yeah. like that scene where he says don't tell me I'm your elder and um, yeah. you know you don't I mean that's heartbreaking yeah, 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 yeah. and yet he's the lowest of the low in one yeah. sense I mean I thought some of those and his vulnerability around when they were manipulating him about his mum yes I really I really felt that keen feeling of family so what would you how would you sum up and score it it is a real sort of um it draws you in doesn't yeah, it, it? it it pounds along it does pound along and i'm i'm a sucker for legal mm. films uh, absolutely sucker and um uh yeah and i was fascinated by all the guantanamo stuff and all the fact that it's still there and lovely lovely details like um jodie foster and benedict talking together about it being a uh shop you know it would now be a shop and yes. people would come and surf and a bit like and alcatraz and... yeah people like alcatraz, yeah people yeah. Will come and uh, yeah this will just be a tourist destination maybe this was what occasionally happened with his performance was it was so beyond belief what had happened to him yeah that sometimes you couldn't believe him yes there was nowhere for him to go with his yeah. acting i think I, I i you know i'm wondering whether he was so methoding the yes. trauma yes that it ended up coming across as quite strange and that in real life someone would be quite strange. Yes. So what would you score it? Eighty-five. God, that's the highest of the lot. Yeah. Oh no, no, I think it's the best film we've reviewed. Oh right, okay. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realise that. Um nothing in this film particularly surprised me. No. Um it Except was for... it was exactly what I expected it to be. Mm -hmm. Jodie Foster was exactly what I expected her to be. It was curious listening to Benedict Cumberbatch with an American accent. Yeah. Um, I think what's breathtaking about the story is just that it happened and it happened to so many people. Yeah, exactly. And that, you know, the terrible reveal at the end that when you think things have gone his way, I won't do a complete spoiler, they appealed. But the Obama administration the Obama appealed. The Obama administration, for goodness sake. Appealed. And he went back in for God knows how long. It's an unforgivable travesty yeah. that this guy and many others like him were held against their, you know, without prosecution, without charging, just mm. because, as the American soldier said or colonel said at one point, someone has to pay for this. Yeah. And that's not to say that some of the people there were. And this is the difficulty with this subject matter, dealing with terrorism. Of course, some were found to be guilty. But for those that weren't, you know, it makes you ask the question, is it, you know, are we willing as humans to... To do these things to, to those, other humans, yeah. yeah, in order to in order to get a forced admission from someone, yeah. So, um, so I thought it, it wasn't a particularly surprising film, but I found it an incredibly compelling watch. And yeah, as I was I watching it, Nadia kept walking past me, going, "We were sent a preview." And Nadia kept saying, "What are you watching?" I said, "Oh, it's really, really," and I was, regardless of whether it was odd or not good or whatever, to her, Tahar Rahim once again kept me coming back. Yeah. He kept, he was the thing, because Benedict and Jodie were just doing their yeah, thing. Yeah, He was the, he's the heart and soul of oh, this Oh, he film. absolutely is. I can't take my eyes off him. No, I you. can't. I can't, even if it's a bit strange yeah, sometimes. Yeah. I think he's quite watchable. So I would give this, probably not 85, I'd give this 80 out of 100. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we're not that different. Not that different. No, no. okay. For more film and family fun, don't forget to click the subscribe button and make sure to click the bell to never miss an update.